Hello and welcome to the Stygrom Platform video tutorial on time sequences in the water module. During this tutorial we will be looking at what time sequences are, how you can use them to configure attributes to vary over time during a water simulation, and how you can create and load in your own time sequences. This video tutorial will make use of the demo breach project. So if you wish to follow along with this video tutorial, it is recommended to open this project in editor mode. To start off with, the demo breach project consists of a small piece of the Netherlands with a central levy. And configured in this project is a breach in that levy. During the simulation, water will flow through that bridge over the surface of the land, flooding and inundating uh, the farms. This is the basic setup of the project. We will be adding and tweaking a few elements in this project to demonstrate the principles of time sequences. To start off with the most used time sequence, specifically for rain, we're going to look at the water overlay without the breach active. To do that we go to overlays, select the flooding overlay and then open the configuration wizard. In the configuration wizard we select our breach area and temporarily set the breach height to a higher value. Now the overlay will recalculate and the breach will be gone. No more water will flow into this project via the breach for now. We can now configure rainfall in this project. Again, open the configuration wizard, select the weather event, and note how it is currently configured. There is no rain, and there is a 30 minute dry period. It is during that 30 minute dry period that the breach and the simulation were taking place. There's also a consistent amount of evaporation of 1.496 millimeters per day. We're going to load in our own time sequence for the rain. Under normal circumstances, we can only configure a specific period with a specific amount of rain, followed by a specific dry period. The wet and dry periods are visualized in this graph over here, where you can see there will be an amount of rainfall, after which the amount of rainfall will flatten. Instead, what we're going to configure is our own amount of rain. I've prepared a file called rainsequence.csv, which stands for comma separated values, which is the format of the files we will be using during this tutorial. If we open it, we see the structure of this file. It consists of a few numbers separated by a comma and with multiple lines of data. The file is structured as follows. The first number specifies a time and the second number specifies an amount. In the context of rain, this file says that for the first five minutes there will be 20 millimeters of rain. Between the first five minutes and the first 10 minutes, or rather between the five minute mark and the 10 minute mark, there will be 10 millimeters of rain. And between the 10 minute mark up until the 45 minute mark, there will be zero amount of rain. 
It's important to note that the range sequence also dictates the total simulation time. Thus loading in a file with a maximum of 45 minutes will specify that the simulation time in total for the range will also be 45 minutes. We're going to load in this file via the configuration wizard. We're going to select the option rather than linear, we're going to say custom, which means we can import our own CSV file to load in rain. Select import. What we see here is the array as it was configured previously, namely as a linear structure with a certain amount of rain and a certain dry period following it. You can already see some similarity with how the file is structured as well. There's first an amount of time and then there's amount uh, of rain. We select the option import new CSV and then select the file we want to import. In this case, rain sequence. We specify the, amount, the unit of the time values, which in this file is minutes. And we, separate, we select the separator value, which we can opt between a comma and a semicolon. In this case, it's a properly formatted file with commas. We press OK. We see the new time sequence loaded in. First five minutes, 20, millim 20 millimeters. Between five and 10 minutes, 10 millimeters. And after 45 minutes, zero millimeters. Select OK to confirm our selection. And we now see the new values in the graph. We can do the same for evaporation. We can set a custom amount of evaporation over time and import a CSV file for that. We have an evaporation CSV file prepared. This one specifies that for the first 10 minutes, there will be 1.1 millimeter of evaporation. Between the 10 minute mark and the 30 minute mark, there will be 0 0.2 millimeter of evaporation. And between the 30 minute mark and the 45 minute mark, there will be a 0 0.9 millimeter amount of evaporation. We import this sequence in the same way. It's minutes and it's commas. And our file is loaded in. We can now close the configuration wizard and recalculate. After the calculation is complete, we can play our overlay and we can see that an amount of rain will fall on the terrain for about the first few minutes, after which the amount of water on the fields stays fairly constant. The only decrease in water that still occurs is due to evaporation, but those amounts are so little that you cannot really see that all that much. So by loading in these files, we have created our own sequence of rain during the simulation. The files to reiterate are not that complex. They state the, the uh, amount of time and the amount of rainfall. You can open any text file or open a new text file. Type in these numbers or the numbers which conform to your own desired sequence and then save it as a .csv file. That can be loaded in via the configuration wizard. Besides rain sequences, it is also possible to use a time sequence to configure an attribute of a hydraulic structure or a hydrological feature to be dynamic over time. 
This isn't the case for all attributes, but for a number of attributes which can vary in real time, it is possible to make them change over time in the simulation as well. Examples of these include the height of weirs, the inlet or outlet capacity, and even the height of certain breaches. We're going to demonstrate how we can use a time sequence to change the height of a breach dynamically. We select our flooding overlay again and the configuration wizard. We can reset the amount of rain that we had. Back to some zero value. And the same for the evaporation over time, which can be reset to a default amount per day. This means there will no, be no rainfall in our project, but instead we will be able to see what the breach is going to do. In the breach area step, we select our breach. We see a long list of available attributes for our breach. And the one that we can configure as a time sequence is the breach height. You can see that through the switch, which is currently set to fixed, which is the default, which means that it will only have one value for the duration of the entire simulation. Instead, we're going to set it to dynamic. Dynamic means that it's going to change during the simulation. And using the select option, we can configure how it changes over time. It looks comparable to our rainfall selection. In that we have a file which shows the sequence that we want for the breach, except the structure is interpreted slightly different when compared to the rainfall. For the breach, at zero minutes, the breach height will be two meters and 50 centimeters. Up until 15 minutes, when it will still be two meters and 50 centimeters. At 20 minutes, the breach height will be minus four meters and 15 centimeters. This means that the breach height will be significantly lower and water will actually be able to flow in through the breach. And it will remain at four meters and uh, at negative four meters and 15 seconds up until the 45 minute mark. Between the 15 and 20 minute mark, the value for the breach height will be interpolated, which means that at 15 minutes, it will be at two meters and 50 centimeters. And then between 15 and 20 meters, uh, between 15 and 20 minutes, it will go down linearly uh, until and in such a way that at 20 minutes, the breach height will have reached minus four meters and 15 centimeters, at which it will remain until the 45 minute mark. We're going to import this file by selecting the import new CSV option and then select our sequence CSV. We will again have the same questions as for the rain. We select the unit of the time, which in this case is meant to be interpreted as minutes. And we select what our separator is. In this case, case it's the comma and we see our values are imported. We select OK to confirm our selection, close the wizard, and our overlay is already recalculating. When the overlay has completed its calculations, we can play the overlay. What we see is during the first minutes, nothing happens. But as we get closer to the 20 minute mark, suddenly water will flow in through the breach across the surface of the land. We can even pinpoint the exact time frame where this happens.
namely right about 16 minutes. This is because there is a linear interpolation between the 15 and 20 minute mark. It's not that after 15 minutes the reach height automatically plummets to 4 meters, but it slowly decreases. At the same time, the height of the water behind the breach is set to a water level of 2 meters. Which means that it's pretty soon that the water can already start to flow across the breach. An important side note for the breaches specifically is that the breach height is used for two things. One, for the flow of water in a fictitious external water level area into the project area. And two, to lower the actual terrain elevation in the project area itself. It is important to note that when using a time sequence, the elevation in the location of that breach is consistent and will always be set at the lowest value found in the time sequence used by the breach height. The changing value as defined by the time sequence is used only to determine whether water from outside the project area can flow in via the breach. Lastly, we should look at the attributes of hydraulic structures which can also be changed via a time sequence. To demonstrate this, we are going to add a single additional hydraulic structure to the project area. We're going to add it right about here, in this waterway. Specifically, the structure that I want to add will be an outlet or an inlet. Where are you? Here you are. And we're going to place it right around here. This means that there is an inlet or outlet in this location in the map. We can now configure the capacity of this inlet along with a number of other attributes. We again open the configuration wizard for the, for the overlay and we go to the step for the inlets. We've added one inlet to the project which means that there is exactly one available. It has a number of attributes. There is a capacity which can be set which can also be changed between fixed and dynamic, thus we can select a time sequence for it. We can also configure a time sequence for either the lower threshold and or the upper threshold as we desire. For demonstration purposes we will only be setting the inlet capacity right now, but the same principles apply for the other attributes of inlets and also for the attributes of other hydraulic structures. For the inlet capacity, we switch from fixed to dynamic and we select select to open the import screen. We have a file ready uh, on my computer, it's called outlet sequence and it is structured as follows. It has three settings. At time steps or at a point in time zero, it will have an inlet capacity or outlet capacity of zero. Uh, at 20 minutes, it will still be at zero. And at 25, it will be set to minus 200, which means it will have a outlet capacity. It will be removing water from the project at a rate of 200 cubic meters per second second at a rate of 200 cubic meters per second that's an excessive amount but for demonstration purposes we're going to use an excessive amount 
We select the option import new CSV and we select the outlet sequence CSV. For the unit, the time unit is intended as minutes and our separator, we currently do not have a separator defined, but we will import it anyway. We can see here how it is interpreted. At the zero minute mark, the value will be zero. At the 20 minute mark, the value will still be zero. At the 25 minute mark, the value will be minus 200 cubic meters per second, which means it will pump water out of the project area at a ludicrous rate. We can then close the configuration wizard and tell our overlay to recalculate. After recalculation is complete, we can play our overlay, which will still make use of the breach with the time sequence. At around 16 minutes, water will begin flowing across the terrain. At about 25 minutes, the inlet will activate. Just as we have done with the breach, we will be able to pinpoint the exact time frame at which the outlet will activate which is around the 25 minute mark. You can see in the visualization that the inlet has activated due to the arrows going up. By placing a measuring point right next to the inlet, we can see the effect that, or the impact that the inlet has or the outlet has on the total amount of water. To start the project off, there is no, uh, to start the simulation off, there is no water in this location until there's a sudden influx from the breach. And it is around the 25 minute mark that the inlet activates or outlet activates and suddenly the amount of water decreases drastically. After which there is a certain balance between the breach and the outlet as it attempts to pump away all of the water which is flowing in. That concludes this video tutorial on time sequences in the water module. If you are interested in any other facet of the Tigron platform or using the water module, such as what kind of other hydrological features or hydraulic structures exist for use in the water module, how evaporation or rain are calculated in more detail, or how to configure the water overlay for specific use cases. Please refer to our educational materials on those specific topics or through the links provided here. Thank you for watching this video tutorial.